Hey, hi. <laughs> welcome or welcome back to my channel. Today I am going to be reviewing the nonfiction epistolary work by Helen Hamp uh, called 84 Sharing Cross Road. If you're new to my channel, then hi, welcome. I'm Shelly. I love books and reading and I really enjoy talking about the books that work super well for me. Although I don't shy away from books that don't work super, super well for me. And um, anyways, if you find yourself enjoying this video and the vibe, I would encourage you to subscribe, stick around, and without any further ado, let's go ahead and get into the meat of this video. 84 Sharing Cross Road is told in letters. And they are mostly letters between and precipitated by Helen Hamp, who is a writer in New York. And she's mostly writing to someone named Frank Dole or Doel. Um, his last name is D-O-E-L. And he works at a store called Marks and Company, Marks and Co. And Marks and Company is a bookstore that is in England. It's in, I believe, it's, it is in London, England. And from what I gather from this very just brief little work is that Helen Hamp is the first person to have written the letter. And she has on her list antique, older, ancient, classical works of literature, books that she is looking for and that she says that she doesn't want. She's, she's full of opinions. She is full of opinions. She does not want um, the antique I mean, she doesn't want the, the US versions. Um, I, I think for a lot of reasons, I think she's it's hard for her to find the book that she wants. This is, by the way, they're corresponding in letters <laughs> because it is 19, what is it? It's 1949. And so she, can't she cannot find what she is looking for in the condition that she is looking for them in. Um, primarily again, books that are a little more obscure, a little more off the beaten path. Um, some of them are at least. And so she reaches out to this bookstore in England and immediately, you know, she gets this reply. They're willing to work with her to find the books that she needs. And Helen Hamp is, she's, she writes for it comes, you know, as they're exchanging letters, you notice this banter between them that they are just really kind of vibing, <laughs> that they are building this relationship, Frank, uh, Frank Dole and Helen Hamp. And also it's super interesting as a book lover myself to have like dipped into the mind of another reader and Helen Hamp is sharing that. She's sharing her taste. She's sharing her, um, th her, her, um, like the way that she goes about looking for books, which is really neat. Um, she also just, because in the, she, like at one point, I don't really, I'm like, I don't want to give anything away. Although it's not like there's, it would be hard to spoil. Even if I told you everything that I could remember about the book, there is something magical about this book, truly. And I'll get to that at the end of the video. But in that you wouldn't want to miss it. Even if I told you every single detail about the book that I could remember, um, like within my power of memorization, having only finished the book yesterday, you would still, I would still encourage you to read the book because it is just a special little work of nonfiction. Oh, that is my phone. Helen Hamp, she mentions that she only likes to books, she only likes to buy books that she has already read. And as somebody who is so interested in the inner lives of readers, in the inner lives of book collectors and book buyers, that Helen sharing her process with her own personal bookstore is really fascinating as someone who's a book lover. Now, Helen is also just hilarious. And you watch their sweet relationship 
develop. It goes from being incredibly formal and then again really quite quite uh, spurred on by Helen herself, she starts to <laughs> to joke around and it comes out in these letters and it's super funny. Let me find something. Oh yeah. <laughs> She ends up getting something from them that she is not satisfied with. And this is one of the very, very, very early letters. And she says, what kind of a black Protestant Bible is this? And so she, she's like, you know, I mean, and that's in caps. I mean, it's written in caps. And she goes on and on about why she's displeased about it. I mean, these letters are very short and snappy. Um, but, you know, even for a short, a short and snappy letter, she is letting her bookseller know, she's letting Frank know, like, when she doesn't like something, and I feel like it's always told, and that's my phone again, it's always told in good humor and good spirit. Um, and with the the best and, and just with like a little, they're just little needling, a little bit of needling of each other, like Frank and Helen. And what's interesting is that England being devastated by World War II has rations at the time. And they end up talking about the, the social and political context um, of their country. And that comes out in the letters, which is super, super interesting. And of course, like I'm such a nerd. <laughs> like I love when things are listed, like prices are listed. And so of course there is always this exchange of we're gonna send you this and she's, you know, paying off her bill and she, you know, builds up credit at the store because, you know, they, she overpays for things. She sends the booksellers uh, gifts. And so they send her letters of praise and thanks back. And there is just this, sweet, sweet, sweet love between like the bookstore itself, Frank, Frank and company, um, or not Mark and company. That's the bookstore's name, Mark and company and Helen Hamp. And she has a really good sense of humor. She has a really like just a big personality. I would have loved to have met her in person. That's how much I just enjoyed this, this book. Now I'm gonna I'm gonna close with this. I don't want this to be a super long video, uh, mostly because I want it to reflect the um, the book itself, which is very short, um, and, and because I don't know if, how long I can go on and on about it. But here here's how I'll, I'll close with how I felt and what I feel like y'all should do um, if if you were looking to see, like is it worth your time or is this you know what what did I think about it? I loved this book. If you cannot tell, I love this book so much. I did not want it to end. I like gleefully and excitedly look forward to getting back into these letters. Um, you know, every, sing every single time I sat down um, to read it. And I was, and I am still a little, like a little bit sad in my heart that the book ended. There it just was such an incredible rep representation of a sweet friendship that developed in kind of like old school in quotes like snail mail old school cor old school correspondence and there was just something so beautiful about that so much so that i didn't want it to end i didn't want it i didn't want it to go anywhere I loved looking at the life of another book lover and the way that she talked about herself and expressed herself. And I love the bookstore and the affection that the employees at the bookstore and the friends of Helen, you know, they ended up becoming friends um, and the way they felt towards her. I, I just love that. I love that. And yeah, I really, I just desperately didn't want it to end. So I would say that if you have, if you have um, the time or if you're looking for a really sweet um, read that will warm your heart, <laughs> just, I would 100% absolutely recommend 84 Sharing Crossroad because it is just, it's precious. It is a precious read. And if you all have any recommendations for books like 84 Sharing Cross Road, not just the epistolary, I don't want just an, a book, the epistolary style books written like with the form of letters. I want a book that is sweet, 
but not too sweet and that has a sense of humor about itself and that is totally, absolutely, utterly sincere and that will just worm its way into my heart for the rest of eternity. Not a big task, okay? Like that is not a big task. That is a, that is a, that is a mild task. <laughs> Um, but yeah, so if you have any recommendations for what I should read after 84 Shoring Crossroad that might fill the hole, the gaping hole that it left in my heart, please let me know. Um, otherwise, I, if you've not read this and you're looking for like a quick and worthwhile read that will just mm, get you in the feels, um, I, I wholeheartedly recommend this this book. Anyhow, that is it for me. I said it was going to be a short one and it's really not that short. So I'm going to go. Um, thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for spending the time with me. I really appreciate it. And I'll see you all in the next one. Bye.